Welcome to episode two of the PCG examples tutorials. In this episode, we're going to look at uh, the use of subgraphs. With PCG, you can build a tool set as you go, and that's what I hope to do with this series. And the first part of that is using subgraphs. So you can make your workflow a bit quicker. It's going to be a small example to start with, but we're going to, I'm going to show how what we made in the first episode, we can now use in another graph just with a click and a, a drag and a click to get it into the a new graph. So I'm going to, we're going to modify our existing graphs here into subgraphs. So I'm going to create a new folder. Sort subgraphs. Old case now. I'm just going to copy both our previous ones in because I just want to keep them intact for, for that. Could just uh, edit them. So with the spline one, all we want to do is get rid of our mesh spawning and make it an output. Save that, and then same for the volume. Get rid of all the filtering and apply it to the output. So now, when we go to create a new graph, so come back to graphs, I'm going to create PCG example graph. And just so we can see it in progress, blueprint for it. Go with its spline. And we'll add our graph. Apple in the world. You get this one. I'll do and then use the subgraph. All we need to do is drag in graph. Fine. And there's two options here. We want the subgraph for this one. We are going to leave later. And if we just debug this, there we go. We just got exactly what we did over there generated. And we just don't have to worry about getting a spline or whatever. So as long as our blueprint that we this graph onto has a spline in it, that'll that'll work fine. So just to save some time, I'm going to come back to our spline example here. Graph. And I'm just going to copy this part so I can get my trees back. Trees. So now I want to... I want to create some paths through the trees, probably common tutorial will see, but I want to show you how you can do it for all paths in your world and, and sort of just remove something from your path that's just in the world, not part of this. So what we're going to do is create a path actor. So I'm just going to do it in prints for the sake of it. So I'm going to create a new actor. The
effectively just the spine I'm creating here. Um, and on here, we want to create some variables. Create variables. One will be float, one will be a vector. And this is going to be our path width. And this one will be the path width vector. We're going to create from our path width constructor. That in and assign that to the Y and I yeah, I'll just assign byte can be very negative. Two hundred. And then this needs to be one, so I've got at least L there, we don't want it to be zero. And what this will do is when we go to generate a point, we'll grab this setting and we can set the width of the path point to the width of the actual path. So we need, I actually set a default, so zero. And now if we in our path, And if, if you want a visual guide on a spine, if you come to the spine, there's a setting, you know, it's going to be default. Okay. But that's just a visual thing in the editor. Um, and if you hold Alt, it does a new point. I'm just making a three example and then grab the duplicate thing and path I didn't make I think they both need to be. I don't want to be able to edit this one, but I think you need it public to read it. I'm not sure. I don't really use blue. I can make that readable, but not editable. Change this to much wider path, and I'll change the visualization to match. Might be some way to link that up actually. Oh. And I might just change this. Now we have our paths and we want to deduct so there's no trees on our path and the way we do that is well we're going to do it with subgraphs so we're going to, first of all we want to we want a subgraph that can we're just going to call remove paths oh actually sorry there's one other thing I didn't do go on we need to tag this now we're going to look it up. So on the on the uh, actual actor, I'm going to put a PCG path tag. So every path will have this tag. Um, make sure you don't do it on the spline or somewhere different because they all have they all have tags. But we want it on the actor because it'll look up the actor and then it can find the tag. It's uh, the spline itself by looking up the actor. Yeah. So now we want to create uh, subgraph, and we're gonna. So subgraphs are just graphs with input and output. So every time I say subgraph, create a subgraph. It's just a graph. But uh, we want this to 
Actually, I'm going to rename these sub just so we know that they're subgraphs and you can drag them in. So this subgraph will be uh, remove path. Right, so in our remove paths, we are going to get all our paths. So we're going to get spline data, and we're not from self now, we're going to go through all world actors by tag, and we're going to put in that tag, PCG path. And we want to be able to select multiple. Without that, it's going to just select the first one it finds. And then from here, we actually want to go inception style and go into another subgraph. So we're going to use another subgraph because we, we need to loop now. So we might have multiple paths here. And we need to loop over each path, and they could be different widths. So we need to apply the width and do all that sort of stuff. And we need to do that in a loop. And to do a loop, you need to use a subgraph. So I'm going to create another subgraph. So the subgraph is going to be uh, bullet gen path points. Now this is going to be a particular setup for this because we need to have inputs and an output. Well, our output is going to be point. In, on these input outputs, you can come and add custom pins, kind of just like a blueprint. And I'm going to change that to point. And then for the input here, add two inputs. The first one will be our spline. Lines. And then it's going to be a loop because it's going to be multiple splines potentially. And it's going to spline type. Allow Marta. We don't need multiple connections. Um, and then, oh, and the pin status for that to required, they can both be required because no point doing it unless we get this data. And w what that'll do is if you haven't hooked the pin up, it'll, it'll stay disabled to required. Uh, and this one's going to be uh, path, it's going to be the path width. Uh, I'm going to call it bounds. It's going to be the vector that's, uh, it's also going to be a loop because we have multiple. But uh, it actually comes through as a attribute set. And I'll take that multiple connections. I don't think it would hurt to leave that on, but we don't, we don't need it. For that. Now we have our inputs. And for our spline, we want to do spline sampler. I'm going to create points along the spline. And we're going to do that by, uh, on the spline by distance. And we're going to use the dis distance increment is going to be our spline width. So to get the, the bounds out of here, we need to do an attribute select. Attribute select. And I can't preview the points, but I'll show you later. But it's it's vector.x attribute name. And then we want to feed that into it. Distance increment. And then that's going to tell it how many splines to create. And now we want to assign the width for these. So we're going to set the bounds. And then on the, the bounds min max is going to be bounds, is our path width. That's going to be a vector that affects the y-axis, left and right. And then we might as well project in here since creating the points. Might as well project. Saves us doing it on the output wherever we're using it.
And that is our line data. Uh, do I tick unbound? You have to tick unbound in here. I always forget this one. Be unbound on the spline. So now if we come to our uh, remove path points, we want to generate our points on the path, and that's our subgraph that we generated. And we want to bring this in as a loop. This is grabbing multiple splines here, feeding them in. And then to get the bounds, we do a get actor property. And we do the same as what we did for the spline here and use the tag. Multiple again. And then we just need to tell it what variable name we're after, and we called it off vector. Feed that in. That's fine now to output. So output that. And we'll make it a It doesn't really matter if that specifies the type. Um, and now on our example subgraph, so now we can on our um, example here, our trees. We're like, okay, I want to take out the paths. Maybe this path's running through this or not. We're just going to put it in works every time no matter what put the spline so we can just bring in our remove paths subgraph and then we can off here and do a diff feed in our points bug this now And there we go, our paths are now chopped out. I left the debug points on so it's a bit more noticeable than the trees, but you can see the paths are chopped out. Wherever you move this. Like so. is very cool so you might have a road or whatever and you can just grab your drag this over you know like if your roads have got that tag on it it'll just work there you go there's use of subgraphs so we've got some tools happening now we can uh we can diff out paths wherever we want just by throwing in a subgraph we can generate points on a inside a spline by throwing in a subgraph. In the next episode, we're going to look at uh, generating points on points, crazy inception stuff. This project is going to be available on Git for Patreons. Uh, it's available at all tiers, so if you want to get access to the, the Git for like five bucks or less, it's, it's available through Patreon. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.